So, what's in Mountain Blade Warband Napoleonic Wars? You can fight as one of five factions. You can be Britain, France, Prussia, Russia or Austria, who were the main combatants in the Napoleonic Wars. You've got uh, artillery and destructible environments. And you've got things like an engineering class that can build barricades, dig trenches and rig explosives. You've got eight combat modes to fight in. Um, and you can have up to 250 players uh, playing at any one time, uh, which is quite impressive. Let's have a look at the multiplayer part. Here's the, uh, the profile screen where you create your character. You can be any nation um, and different types of troops, and you can change things like the uh, facial expression, hair, etc. etc. Uh, you can host a game from here where you can pick the map that you'd like to play on and set how many players are going to play and a full range of server controls uh, for the game but uh, you mainly want to be joining a game and here you can see uh, the interface for selecting the different types of games that you can play you've got a different uh, filters how you want to play it and all the different game modes that you can play as well and you can set your ping limit to, to play on a server that suits your PC and your internet speed. Okay let's choose one of the game modes uh, to get a flavour of the gameplay and we'll choose Commander Battle which is a little bit different uh, to uh, most uh, game modes. Here we see the welcome screen and the different factions that you can play. You can either be France or Russia. Uh, and now you can see the different types of units that you can control. You've got all the line infantry units there and some cavalry units and a couple of different uh, artillery units that you can control. Uh, just for this we'll choose the uh, standard French line infantry unit. We'll join this unit of French Voltigeurs. Now the main difference with Commander Battle is this unit is being controlled by one player and the unit size can be anywhere between 20 and 50 characters. So you're not running around the battlefield as a, as a single soldier. You can give your uh, unit different commands you can order them to move around the battlefield, uh, you can order them into different formations and you can give them different firing orders as well. If we switch to a, a different unit we'll follow these Russian infantry who are trying to get into combat with the French Voltigeurs that we were just with. Now the player controlling this unit is just giving them an advance order He's now giving them a form up into line order and getting them to shoot at the Voltigeurs. For those of you who play games like BF3, you'll have noticed that the, the graphics are not as high end, but the battlefields are pretty huge to play on, and the research and rendering of the period uniforms is really pretty good. Here we can see some French Grenadiers and French Cuirassiers attacking the Russian infantry unit on the top of the hill. Uh, the French commander of the Cuirassier unit has obviously given them a, a charge order. Now the unit you control, um, until your last character dies, you will continue to play in the game. Two units now getting into close quarter combat. And in the background, you can just see another unit of Polish infantry coming into the fight as well. So, Command Battle is a different, different type of fighting mode. And so, if we stop that and we'll choose a different one and have a look at that as well. This time, we'll choose Battle Mode. Uh, this one's got over a hundred people 
involved in this battle. Um, you have to be a little bit more careful because now you're playing as a as an individual. So if you die, you have to wait until the turn ends before you can get back into the game. Again, we'll choose just a, a basic line infantry unit, and then we'll select around. And here we can find an engineer who's building a barricade. Let's just see what these troops get up to. Now remember, the, all of these are individuals this time. You're not commanding a, an entire uh, troop unit. It's just one one character. So if you get killed, then that's it until the next round. You can see quite a few different troop types on display. You've got some Austrians here. Now all the little flags that you can see above the characters' heads um, signify that they are actually on your side. So if you see a character like here, you've got the rifleman without the flag above his head. He is on the opposing team. Um, so it is your target to kill him. You can see quite a few people moving up to attack. Fast and furious action. You can still see uh, you know, quite a few casualties where there's a few people been killed already down here. Let's just have a quick look on the action as it goes on. And you got the rifleman, he's just dodging into cover. I suspect he's uh, reloading his Baker rifle here. So we'll just slowly switch over to somebody else. And we've got a Austrian line infantryman. He's got a couple of enemies coming around the corner. Just taking a pot shot. Let's see whether he can get him in melee. And he can, he's just managed to bayonet that British line infantryman. Let's just have another quick look at a couple of other troop types. A few more Austrian troops. And we've got a British Light Dragoon steeple chases his way through. So again, lots of action going on here. So if we quit out of that one and we'll choose a different mode to have a look at. This time we'll have a look at Siege. Um, again, this is a, a different mode where one team has to defend a fortification, um, but this time you do spawn, or respawn if you get killed, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Again as we get in we'll choose the, the troop type that we're going to be, and I'll be uh, a British line infantryman. So now I'm actually in the game this time. And here we can see a, a battery firing at the walls. Again, these are individual people playing the characters, manning the guns. So let's join the attack. So let's move in. Everybody that you can see so far is on, on my side. Oops. And the guy who was just standing next to me just got taken out either by a cannonball or a bullet, <laughs> which is not too good for him. Let's move up. You can see a, a sapper destroying something. And we've got a couple of guys here armed with the rockets. So they must have been firing at the walls. Trying to bring the walls down. And there we go, he just fires one off. So let's move in, let's see whether we can get in through one of these breaches up here. As you can see there's quite a few people involved in this battle. Let's see whether we can break into the fortification. So if we just hop up here. Oh, there's a couple of guys coming up. Have to be a bit careful here. And unfortunately I just got shot in the head. <coughs> just suppose is uh, about to happen if you're part of the Flawn Hope. So we go back to the respawn area and move up again. As I said, the you don't need to worry about getting killed in these rounds, as you will keep respawning until the objective is either 
won or lost. Let's just move up on the on the flank this time and see if we can get into the buildings. As you can see, there's plenty of space to move around. And again, there's a, a good number of people involved in this battle. And here's a couple of my team engaged in a firefight by the looks of it. Let's see if we can get around here. And the side gate is open, so let's just move up and see if we can get in. Here's another guy. And unfortunately, I was a little bit too slow on firing there. It was shot for a second time. So, that gives you an idea of how the siege mode works. You get plenty of guys involved in this. And it, uh, it's actually really good fun. Let's give uh, one more battle mode a try. And we'll go for Team Deathmatch this time, which is a mode everybody's going to be familiar with. So we'll choose a server that's got a reasonable number of people on. And again, I'll auto-assign. And this time I'll choose to be an Austrian Jaeger. So here we are, we're spawned straight into the action. There's lots of different... Whoa! And you got taken out by some cavalry there and excellent bayoneted almost immediately <laughs> so that's respawn as you can see you can get into the buildings have a look around fortunately there's nobody in here to kill me so let's get back to where the action is see a couple of uh, members of my team sprinting to get back up to where that farm area is. Maybe I should have chosen to be a cavalryman this time. And we've got somebody who's a bit of a comedian running backwards there. Whoa! Nearly got taken out by another cavalryman. See if we can just quickly get involved in some hand to hand combat. Let's see if we can take a pot shot, see if we can get somebody and missed. Oh, watch out for the uh, Carassio. Luckily, <laughs> ducked that one. Oh, here comes another one. A Lancer nearly got me. Let's just make sure that I'm in melee mode before we get involved. So, let's see if we can help out get rid of this Russian artilleryman. And there's a Russian infantryman here that needs taken out as well. So, now this is all pretty standard stuff for any deathmatch mode on any similar game. Oh, watch out for Hazar, who's trying to take me out. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this infantryman here. Oh, I think I might have got a, a couple of blows in there before I died. So, hopefully that's given you a, an idea on what the deathmatch mode looks like in Napoleonic Wars. Hopefully I've given you some idea of the amount of gameplay available. Um, we've only had a look at four of the eight combat modes. Uh, there's also a little custom battle function here that you can use to set up uh, battles to test and try out orders and formations and firing. You can choose the map that you want to play on and you can also change the time of day and the amount of fog or rain that you want in the battle to practice your skills before you get into uh, playing online with other people. So, what do I think of uh, Mountain Blade, Warband, Napoleonic Wars? I think it's a great game. Uh, there's absolutely hours and hours of gameplay with all the different 
battle modes that you've got. You know, whether you're into the commander battle mode, giving orders to groups of troops, maneuvering them around, putting them into formations, or whether you just want to play as a lone wolf solo player in, in deathmatch. You can run around to your heart's content killing people and with all the other modes that you've got there of siege and capture the flag there's plenty of hours worth of gameplay available so I can quite confidently say that I'll be keeping Mountain Blade and Napoleonic Wars on my hard drive I hope you enjoyed the two videos that I've made for this and hopefully I'll speaking to you again soon.